This episode brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Also brought to you by Chime, the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. Shyamalan dice. You said that like it's a thing. It is a thing. So you know how Shyamalan writes and directs terrible movies. And Ghost writes. The blame must be shared for she's all that. Well, they've been so hit and miss lately that people are saying they're literally a roll of the dice. Oh, so so now we literally roll the dice. Oh, sounds like fun. What's up? The visit. Oh, okay. Uh, I got uh, two hundred saying it's bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm bad. Yeah. This is the yeah, visit. Shit, double or nothing. What's up next? Split. Split. All right, that's gotta be bad. Oh, all right, all right, yeah. <laughs> no! Yeah! Yeah! James McAvoy is crazy, Jane. No way that's gonna be good. All right, triple or nothing. What's next? Uh, glass. Glass, okay. I'm gonna say that's uh, good. Say <laughs> <laughs> Half and half. I'll take it. You think Split would have rolled like that? All right. What's the next one? Uh, servant. All right. I'm gonna say it's good. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I guess nobody saw it. Yeah, but it's not his third season. I will just say it doesn't count. What's next? Old. Oh, that's gotta be good. What? Well, that's gotta be bad. Let's roll and find out. <laughs> All right. Hey, 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 roll, roll. Yeah! <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. It rolled bad, but it resulted in a Vincent Van Gogh painting. Exactly. We all win. Huh? It rolled bad, but it's so bad it automatically created a masterpiece. Oh, so who gets the money? Shyamalan. Thank you. It's nice to be seeing this in my hands again. You know, for all your problems, you keep sticking around. I'm like a bad masseuse. You don't notice me until I start rubbing you the wrong way. Based on the graphic novel Sandcastle, Old was released in July of 2021 and is certainly a return to form for M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, not Six Sense Unbreakable or Visit Shyamalan. I'm talking Happening, Lady in the Water, and Sign Shyamalan. The so bad it's entertaining for completely different reasons gold. Though a decent hit at the box office, Old didn't exactly win over a ton of critics and audiences. But you're not looking at it from the right point of view. Don't look at this as Shyamalan. Look at this as Shyamalan! It has all his goofiest tropes that really only he can bring to us. There are so many characters, so many lines, and so many story threads that make absolutely no sense, and the more you think about it, the more hilarious they become. I'm so excited to have you bad again, Shyamalan, so let's take a closer look. This is good old Shyamalan making bad new old. Your first clue, this is finely aged slash expired M. Night is in its opening dialogue, as we see the Kappa family being driven to a resort. Sing it, girl. No, I can't. Her spontaneity has been stripped from her. These are things humans say. And oh yeah, the dialogue just keeps going like this. Are we close? Stop wishing away this moment. Okay, you can tell me. An AI wrote this script, right? That was the assignment. A computer writes a Shyamalan script. It's like, insert statistic that has a lot of numbers here. There's 250,000 furniture related injuries in the United States per year. I love this technology is evolving. We're de-evolving. This is Prisca, played by Vicky Creeps, with her husband Guy, played by Gail Garcia Brunel. Both these performers have been wonderful in other films, but that was before the Shama wand was waved, and like magic, they now talk like one of those text-to-speech apps. You don't know me. I curate exhibits for museums. There's something very wrong with my child. Most people who die on vacation die from overindulgence of food or alcohol or a, or a mixture of all of the above 99.4% of the time. Don't worry though, they're quickly overshadowed by the kids, Trent and Maddox. Particularly 
Emily Trent, who just so happens to love asking strangers who they are and what they do for a living. What are your names and what do you do for a living? What are your names and occupation? What are your names and occupations? What's your name and what do you do for a living? What a convenient quirk that just happens to get across character exposition in a totally believable way. Now I will admit, at first I thought maybe the kid had some sort of condition where he focuses on stuff like that. But as the film continues, he gets older and he never talks like this again. At all. He has no idea what it means, but he knows it's bad. He's trying to help us. And remembering the bizarre dialogue of the kids in Signs, I truly think this is how Shyamalan thinks children talk. You can come over to my house and make up stories. Then we can go to the same college together and become neighbors with mortgages. <laughs> That's great dialogue for background characters in a video game. Actually, it's not even that, but you do know we're hearing every line you're writing, right? There's literally trouble in paradise, though, as Guy and Prisca get in a big argument about not letting the kids know she's slowly dying. And they're getting a divorce. You're always thinking about the future. It makes me feel not seen. Good job keeping this from us, guys. Are we to blame? I think so. We're then introduced to more people who speak entirely in foreshadowing. I have a calcium deficiency. Sit up, Kara, honey. Why? You don't want to be hunched when you grow up, baby. It's very unattractive. I wonder if that calcium thing's gonna make her a hunchback. What do you think, Harvey? You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Why does everyone at this table speak an ironic? When the owner of the White Lotus lets the Kappas know about a secret beach he only recommends to special guests. There's a private beach on the nature preserve side of the island. I could arrange a van to take you. Sounds like a great memory for us. I like focusing on the back of the side character's head instead of the reactions of the main characters. It's more pretentiously idiotic. Across from them, though, a woman starts having a seizure. A doctor, played by Rufus Sewell, tries to help. Oh, not with the woman's seizure, but with the husband's dialogue, who upon seeing his wife violently shake on the floor, reacts like anyone would. I'm a nurse. My name is Jaren. Hi, Jack. I think if you just leave her lying here for a while. Thank you, doctor. It's Jaren, by the way. <laughs> I've just declared Jaren's my favorite character. I know the doctor technically gets the name wrong, but he still brings it up twice like it's gonna help the situation. Like somewhere there's a doctor that's gonna be like, he's having a heart attack. Oh, if only there was a little boy who asked everybody who they are and what they did for a living. I'm a nurse, my name is Jaren. Thank God! The next day the Kappas are driven to the island along with the doctor and his family. Okay, guest checklist. Books, sunscreen. Director cameo. Okay, we're set to go. Enjoy everybody. They're all dropped off at the beach, which seems to be everything the resort promised, but it looks like there's already somebody there. He happens to be a famous rapper, and I can't wait to tell you his name. Oh my god! That's mid-sized sedan! <laughs> That's the name you have if you're a YouTube rapper or you're touring with Weird Al. And the even funnier thing is, it doesn't play into the story at all. You could say he's anything from a brain surgeon to a pizza delivery boy, and it wouldn't impact the character in the least. I think it's here just to show M. Night understands rap music, but he comes across having as much street cred as, ironically, the little boy from The Visit. Oh, God bless this movie. I told you, I don't want to live like this. I'm going for a drive to calm down. Oh, I wish we had less symbolic kids. While playing hide and go seek though, Trent discovers an unexpected visitor. <gasps> I just wanted to be part of your world. A dead woman is found in the water and Honda Civic approaches, giving, I guess, a normal M. Night response. Oh, damn. He reacted to that the same way the dude reacts to some people having sex with no joy. Oh, no. Oh, yes, Miss Lebowski. Ford Mustang admits he knew this woman and that she went out for a swim but didn't return. I guess there's supposed to be a mystery whether or not he killed her, but I'll just give it away, he didn't. So what the hell was up with this reaction? Oh, damn. Flonase doesn't have a money-back guarantee. How would you react if you were a kid and you saw a dead body? I'm so hungry. Me too. Well, we'll start a fire and eat what the piranhas didn't nibble off of her. What is wrong with you aliens?! Do you strike him? I don't need to know the context of... What? No. Of course not. So why's your nose bleeding? You know what I like about seeing a movie? Actually seeing a movie. Can you pan over so we can see the people, please? Why is seeing a blurry version of the trash heap from Fraggle Rock more interesting? 
Oh, if only there was some way to relieve this tension. <laughs> Jared, you son of a bitch, get in here! I couldn't tell you how big my smile got when I saw this guy was in more of the film. Especially when you discover that his awkward acting from earlier was not just an isolated take, it's his whole performance. Wait, why? They left already. What happened? I'm Jaren, by the way. And again, I do want to emphasize, I have seen this guy good in other stuff. I actually perk up whenever I see him in something because I think he's such an engaging actor. But again, he was probably given the same Shyamalan cocktail of <laughs> what? No cell phone reception on this beach. You stay here. See if the director is actually satisfied with my performance and then tell me if that's Robert Hayes. When they try to leave, they discover they weirdly stumble backwards and black out, unable to exit. To make things worse, something seems to be wrong with Trent. Something is wrong with my son, some is, kind of reaction. Is it severe? I don't have time for this. What kind of doctor are you? Hey now, don't reveal your job until the little boy asks for it. Sounds weird if you don't. You look different too. How? I, I don't know. You just look different. Hold my hand. Okay. Looking at her ear is awesome, but can you be a movie for five minutes? Things get even worse when the doctor's mother stops breathing and eventually dies. She couldn't take a shock. She's, she's so a murdered woman, her heart couldn't take it. To Rufus Sewell's credit, he's one of the only actors that can take this bizarre writing and make it sound almost believable. I guess that comes from a lifetime of knowing how to act great in both awesome projects and absolute shit. Everyone else, though, can't quite get past the Shyamalan filter. What are your names and occupations? I'm Jaren. I'm Jaren, by the way. Have you seen my children? <laughs> is, is everyone trying to play a joke on us? What? Aren't these your children? Okay, you can tell me. Did all of you film your parts separately in quarantine and then they CG'd them together? Because none of you are acting like you're responding to what the other is saying. They discover, though, that the children are drastically growing, aging by about five years. And if you're wondering why the kids constantly shoot up in age, but the adults look exactly the same throughout most of the movie, M. Knight would like to remind you he directed The Sixth Sense. Yeah, that's me! God, it's my worst nightmare. I'll have to pay for their college in less than a year. I'll give credit to casting that they found people that really look like the kids growing up. But is it me, or is everyone's acting getting worse as they get older? No! Mom, we're scared! If I cry, please don't let them see. I won't. I still can't get any reception! I never thought I'd say this, but the community college down the street might have some better actors for you. Like I said before, Sowell is the only one coming out of this surprisingly convincing, but it's almost like M. Night noticed that and said, Oh, I know some shit that'll make him sound stupid! The dog has died! Oh my god. Oh my god. I was only just alive. Uh-uh, that is a joke line. That is a joke line! They almost used the exact same wordage in the comedy Blades of Glory. Remember how they used to be alive? But oh, you think the kid asking for name and occupation was forceful? One of them suggests standing in a circle explaining who they are. Why are you here? We we've been going through something. He's under a lot of stress as a doctor. How many times are they going to introduce themselves? The movie's almost halfway over. If I don't know who these characters are by this point, either I'm not paying attention or the movie's not paying attention. Briska! Wait, Friska's tumor seems to be growing fast as well, to the point where she can't even stay conscious. Do we have alcohol? Yes! Oh, thank God, I need a drink. I mean, does anyone have a needle and thread? We're gonna have to sew yeah. this up. The doctor has to operate, and even though they establish later that his mind is deteriorating, with M. Knight's dialogue, I just believe this is a normal line he would have someone say in an emergency. Do you know that Jack Nicholson did a film with Marlon Brando? What is he saying? What was the name of that film? Charles Breen. You sure this isn't time for another random conversation involving numbers? The operation starts, they focus more on the clouds because the DP was drunk, the suspense keeps building and building, and like all of you, I am looking up that movie with Jack Nicholson and Marlon Brando. It's more interesting what's going on in this film. I'll give you a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look to your left on our tour of 
sponsorships, you'll see DoorDash. Ever pull into the driveway after a trip to the grocery store only to realize you forgot that one key ingredient for dinner? I sure do! Why, hello, Chippy, the chipmunk mascot we suddenly have. Hello! Hi. Well, now you have options. Get the groceries you need or a backup meal from your favorite local restaurant delivered with DoorDash. You mean you can get what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash? That's right, you strange concoction. Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. Craving late night ice cream? Forget that one key ingredient for dinner? Or maybe you just need to stock up for the week? I do all those things! I'm a chipmunk! Yes, chipmunks do those things. Well, with DoorDash, you can get everything on one app. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeyes, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. It's ordering easy? Yes, it is, you scary devil, and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. And for a limited time, viewers can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code NOSTALGIA2021. That's 25% off and up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code NOSTALGIA2021. Don't forget that's code NOSTALGIA2021 for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, term supply. You did a pretty good job there, you terrifying monstrosity. Why don't you say what's on the right? Oh, well, on the right, we have Chime. Kick off 2022 with a better checking account with no monthly fees. And that's right, you spawned of the under World Chime, an award-winning app and debit card, has no overdraft fees, foreign transaction fees, monthly fees, or service fees. With over 60,000 fee-free in-network ATMs at many locations like most Walgreens, 7-Eleven, and CVS, you can access your money when you need it, where you need it. You can also send money to anyone, even if they aren't on Chime! Fee-free for you and no cash-out fees for them! Well, I think you got telling them to make their first good decision of the new year. Not trusting talking animals? That's right, you scary mistake, but also to join the over 10 million people using Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's Chime.com slash nostalgia. Want to make yourself useful? Read all that fine print stuff I don't want to read. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bancorp Bank or Stripe Bank NA members FDIC. Get fee-free transactions at any MoneyPass ATM in a 7-Eleven location or at any All Point or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Otherwise, out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Sometimes pay anyone instant transfers can be delayed. The recipient must use a valid debit card or be a Chime member to claim funds. Hey, maybe you're not such a disturbing mascot after all. Oh, remember that when I eat your face. These are my last words, aren't they? You can show him the ad again before I devour you. Okay. taken out of Prisca, the wound seems to heal up abnormally fast, the children grow even more, but most importantly, Missouri Breaks was the name of the movie with Jack Nicholson and Marlon Brando. I'm sorry, so far that's the most fascinating thing I've gotten out of this film! Toyota Prius realizes, though, there's something wrong with the woman who drowned earlier. Damn! I think you mean, oh damn. She turned into the ribs from the end credits of Flintstones, and they're panicking more and more about what to do. As the kids continue to get older, Trent finds certain urges are growing for the doctor's daughter. What's happening to us? I think we're just growing. I don't feel the same. It's weird. Both your left eyes are acting great. Is this movie allergic to showing performances? Jaren has a theory that it's the rocks that are causing them to age. Sure, because trees were great. Sorry, this is nonsense. Let's not shut down everyone's experience. Experience? What are you writing the Yelp review right now? What makes you think I slept with her? I'd say she's about five months pregnant. What? What? Why do I have the urge to high five but flee at the same time? She instantly starts to give birth and the doctor isn't able to help because, well, I think he just figured out what movie he's in. I used to see you in our neighborhood. Who, who are you? Jaren reacts the same way you would think Jaren would react. I'm Jaren! <laughs> My man, you are this generation's I'm Spartacus! The baby instantly dies, though, as it's unable to survive the rapid changes on the beach. Mr. Director, you're gonna make me look really good in this close-up, right? As good as Mark Wahlberg's nostrils. I, it, that, that was said. The doctor goes absolutely insane, though, and takes out all his rage on Mercedes-Benz. He's gone. He's been impounded. Oh, the group just keeps their distance from the doctor, and Sharon says he's gonna try and swim for help. Watch him! Make sure to tell the world my story, that I'm Jaren. And I'm Lloyd! God damn it! It's here that Prisca reveals that through their rocky marriage, she had an affair. Was there someone else? 
I found out about this tumor. And I got scared. I got scared onto another penis. Maddox takes it. Well? Be stronger for everyone. Really, I legit don't know if that counts in Shamala land as taking it well. Unless she finds out her and Trent have something in common. They're a magnet for floating dead people. Oh no, it's... Oh, what was his name? Jaren bites the dust and it looks like the doctor's daughter follows as she tries climbing out but gets dizzy and falls. <laughs> she was my first, middle, last! And things only get worse. What's happening? Oh, she was fine. What, what's happening? I don't know. I completely forgot we saw this before at breakfast. Don't look at me. I'm being crazy over here. Guy's vision suddenly starts to go as well as Prisca's hearing. And Nightfall doesn't bring anything better. Who is that? The dead rapper. Who do you think? <laughs> do you remember a movie with Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill? I think it was called Space Jam. They eventually kill him, but things get stranger when the kids enter a cave and discover the doctor's wife has gotten worse from her calcium deficiency. What is a hobbit precious? <laughs> oh, come on. You're borderline coyote now. She even starts tetrising herself, and as you'd imagine, it's pretty funny. My only regret is that I have bonitis. She's killed off, and finally the adults start to look like they're aging. Hmm, why do I suddenly think Tucker Carlson is right about everything? The two of them make amends before passing away. Sensing the writing is on the wall, the two kids, now grown up, decide to act like kids once more by building sandcastles and decoding a message their friend from the resort gave. It just so happens to contain their way out. Apparently the coral not only deflects the rock's effects, but it also so happens to lead off the beach. Too bad they fall victim to the equivalent of tripping in a slasher film. For a second I thought they were gonna get through the coral. At last, I got so tired of killing actors' careers, I finally moved on to killing the actors themselves. I guess the big twist, which is really more of an explanation, is that the resort finds sick people to send to the beach and let them die in the attempts of finding new medical cures. Because of this beach, we have been able to save hundreds of thousands of lives with new medicines. I feel like there's a lot of ways you could still run these experiments without having to kill people. But whatever, it looks like the siblings got out and alerted the proper people. Curses. Maybe the resort should have taken out that coral they clearly knew was there and led off the island, but that would take a lot of money, which they clearly didn't have. This is so dumb. So, okay, the best friend sees Trent, touches his face, and we tilt up to the clouds as the movie finally keeps going. Eh, you may have thought that was the ending, but nope. They had to show that in order to get out, they had to get out. Holy shit, I never would have put that together! Oh, and I guess there's this pointless line. How's she handling things? How would you feel if a 50-year-old man called and told you he was your six-year-old nephew? Again? Yeah, I don't know why it chose to end there, even though it had a perfect spot to stop already, but... Jesus, when has anything about this movie been normal? <laughs> Old is so bad. So hilariously, entertainingly bad. I like Shyamalan when he's good, but I love him when he's awful. When he does awkward, it is so distinct and puzzling that I can't help but fall in love with it. Even when it doesn't work, there's never a sense he's half-assing it. You know in his mind he sees this as genius, and a part of me really loves that he does. There's something almost innocent about these mistakes, like they're big-budget versions of the home movies he would put as Easter eggs on his DVDs. I don't get any mean-spirited cynicism out of it, eh, for the most part. It's usually just an awkward guy making awkward stuff with every ounce of passion that he has. I guess I could be angry, but the dude is just making the movies he wants his way. And in one way or another, they are extremely fun. I always see what he's going for, and when he doesn't achieve it, there's something almost endearing to it, like he misses the mark in such a creative way. You have to take risks to make mistakes like this, and whether it works or not, he is a filmmaker who does stuff in a way no one else is. 
So even though it's not technically good, I still enjoyed the hell out of it. I'm not sure what his future holds, good films, bad films, or a little bit of both, but chances are we're all gonna be intrigued one way or another. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, here oh, we go. Yeah. Oh, All right, what show on movie is next? Oh, that is so old news, Boomer. Yeah? Yeah, it's Pogs now! Oh, yeah! Right. Oh, you mean like uh, Stephen King Pogs? No, just Pogs. Oh, like good Zack Snyder movie Pogs? There is a life outside of movies, Critic. I don't think that's true. Okay, here we go! I think I see why we stopped playing this now. Yeah. What are your names and occupations? Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and uh, this one was a recommendation so thank you so much for that. It's called A Safe Haven for Newborns and this is dedicated to saving the precious lives of newborns in Florida from the dangers of abandonment and assisting pregnant girls and women in crisis. Their vision is to eliminate infant abandonment through education, prevention, and community involvement and to assist pregnant girls and women to realize a productive future. Uh, it allows mothers, fathers, or whoever is in possession of an unharmed newborn, approximately seven days old or less, uh, to leave them with someone at safe havens, any uh, hospital, staffed fire rescue station, or staffed emergency, uh, emergency medical service station, with no question to ask, totally anonymous, uh, the hospital will contact a participating private adoption agency who will then arrange placement of the newborn with a waiting family. So uh, this is definitely something that uh, apparently is something that happens, sadly, but, uh, you know, it, uh, places like this help out. They're really good organizations. Uh, so definitely check them out. See if you want to donate or spread the word. Uh, just anything you can do to help. It's a new year, and, you know, there's always people that are going to need as much help as possible. And there's a lot of people who are willing to help. So definitely see if you can donate, uh, spread the word, anything like that, and that'd be wonderful, man. So thank you so much and take care.